Hey everyone, this is John McNaughton, and I want to talk to you today about my new painting, The Emperor Has No Clothes. And it's been on the drawing table for many, many months. I've been thinking about it, trying to figure out uh, how I was going to paint uh, Joe Biden, our former vice president and how I was going to incorporate different important people in the painting as he speaks from his lectern in the White House, uh, the press corps room where he gives a speech. And I loved the uh, Hans Christian Andersen fable, Emperor's New Clothes, I think it was, uh, and how I could use that to really explain what's going on in the country today where, you know, are uh, the elderly Joe Biden, who can barely think cognitively, is being put forward as the President of the United States, and it's kind of, it's really uh, shameful to watch. But uh, it's hard to feel too bad for the guy because he's had such a long history of lying to the American people. Uh, it's really, it's frustrating to, to see that, that he was able to uh, maneuver himself to a place where he became the president of the United States. And I won't go into detail there, but I felt like this painting needed to be said. And it's the perfect metaphor, the perfect parable, however you want to call it, for what is happening at this moment, 2022, in the United States of America. So uh, put a lot of thought into this painting. And part of the fun was trying to capture the right look of Biden as he's wearing his beautiful golden crown, which kind of looks like a court jester crown, you know, just sort of the popping, flapping out at the top, and he's got his red rubies and all that. But, um, you know, how do, I, how do you paint something like this tastefully? Well, I decided to, to paint it tastefully distastefully in a way that, uh, you know, doesn't show anything, and yet you know what's going on. And he's just standing there with his hands out like he normally does. And he's got that look on his face that he gets. Uh, it's, you know, I was just chuckling most of the time I was doing this painting. I, I just, I thought it was hilarious. But at the same time, tragic. So you notice that he's got one of his legs showing under the lectern. And does that not remind you of that famous uh, quote when he was, he kind of, went off script and started talking about uh, how he used to work at the pool or something and the kids would rub his furry legs and I mean I'm I'm telling you you can't make this stuff up <laughs> so he's like the worst guy that they could have nominated to be president of anybody but everybody knew his name and he was the vice president to Barack Obama so who else are you going to get He's, he was their man, even though the guy, you know, hid out in his basement during the entire election season because he was afraid to get COVID while Trump was doing all these big rallies. Uh, I think that, that the real reason was because of his age and he just doesn't have the enthusiasm. He just couldn't hold it together. But he was their, their greatest hope. And, and for that reason, he was supported and continues to be supported like the emperor with no clothes. So it just works perfectly. And um, you have Kamala applauding. She's looking straight ahead with that face that she makes. And then you've got uh, Nancy Pelosi making her famous clap. Oh, she's so happy. You know, she's the third in command. If something happened to Biden or Harris, she'd be the president of the United States or the appointed leader. Boy, wouldn't that be something? So she's applauding, and, and then next to her is uh, Jen Pisaki, I think that's how they say her name. And uh, she's, she's really something. Um, she's got one of her hands on the, the back of Pelosi. She's in the awkward position of having to convince the public that the emperor has his clothes on fully and is in complete uh, control of the situation. So, wouldn't want to be her. So then you have uh, General Milley, and he's standing there applauding, which uh, technically they're not supposed to do. But, you know, when has he ever kept the rules when it comes to appropriateness? So he's, uh, he's applauding for the president. He is the 20th 
uh, the 20th chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff over the military. He's the highest ranking military officer. He's got that look on his face like, uh, whatever you say, sir. He is the most demoralizing leader that the military has ever had. He's a general woke. You know, he is, he is the perfect sidekick for Biden and completely unaware or willing, not willing to uh, acknowledge that Biden is incapable of leading the country right now. Notice he's being softly touched on his right arm by another military admiral appointed by uh, President Joe Biden, uh, Rachel Levine. And um, this person, I don't know what pronoun is proper, but this person uh, earned, earned the right to stand in this line because they are certainly uh, equal to all the rest of them. So Xi Jinping is the president, the supreme leader of the People's Republic of China. And uh, he is standing uh, prominently in the picture, applauding Joe Biden, because Joe Biden serves the purposes of communist China in such a great manner. He's very pleased. So, you know, he's, he's very thrilled to be there and to be a part of this wonderful group. So just to the side of Xi Jinping is Dr. Anthony Fauci. Anthony Fauci, and he's got a look on his face like, oh dang, I accidentally looked a little too far to my left. I didn't mean to see that. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm gonna try to unsee what I've just seen. He definitely wears uh, his rose-colored glasses, or no glasses at all, I'm not sure what it is. And uh, he, he deserved a spot in the painting. Uh, you know, he has a much more prominent role in uh, the, vice, the former vice president, Joe Biden's administration, than, uh, than he did in Trump's administration. You know, Trump all but pretty much ignored him. Uh, but boy, he is, he's a very powerful wizard of the medical profession. Uh, obviously, he knows everything about the pandemic and has been 100% right on everything. Yeah, so, you know, old, old Bill here, you know, he, he's applauding. He... He can empathize with being in awkward situations, so, you know, he, he empathizes with old Joe. Uh, that's all I'll say about that. And standing in front of him is his beautiful companion, his uh, wife of 60, 70 years, I, I'm not sure. Uh, and uh, Hillary, she's applauding, um, and she's got a look on her face like, like she knows something we don't know. So, you know, I it was funny. I. She just kind of showed up in the painting. I wasn't really expecting that. Next thing I knew, there she was. She just can never go away. So, and to the right of Jen Pisaki is another fellow artiste, uh, Hunter Biden, the son of Joe Biden. Who would have thought that a former uh, director, a board of directors uh, for, for Burisma in Ukraine, an incredible company, just solid as a rock, you know, he was able to uh, help guide that company to success. So, you know, he's a, he's a fine standing young man who, uh, who uh, has quite a history with different family relations, drug use, and now is creating artwork for the world at incredibly uh, modest prices. You know, only, only half a million for, you know, that's, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm impressed. So then to his right is one of his buddies, uh, Vladimir Putin, who, who is looking at Biden like, thank you, you know, thank you for all you've done. You know, you, you know, you were right. I would much rather work with you than with Trump because now I can have everything I've ever wanted. So uh, as you look at, at Putin standing there applauding, it reminds me of the phrase that uh, Joe Biden has often used, uh, to build back better. You know, which I think he has kept his promise because really, if you consider what he's done for the Soviet Union, for China, uh, you know, he's, he's helped them build back their countries even better than they ever were before. Everything is better if you're not an American. 
and behind President Putin is our, our one of our, our favorite former presidents, uh, Barack Hussein Obama. So he's standing there and he's got this jubilant uh, expression on his face. And I don't think it's because he's impressed with Biden as much as he's just kind of amazed that he's been able to continue to have so much influence in the country. So you notice he has his hand on the shoulder of Vladimir Putin. Uh, you know, it kind of throws me back to 2012 during the election when he got caught on a hot mic with, uh, with one of Putin's representatives saying, you know, once the election's over, he'll have a lot more flexibility and uh, to get more things done. I wonder what he meant by that. I, I, think, that's, I think that's just kind of his uh, reminder to Putin that I'm here and I'm thinking of you. Now, one of the most important parts of this painting, I haven't got to yet, but if you look closely in the bottom left corner, there's this little boy, and he's pointing out the obvious because nobody's willing to, to, to acknowledge what's really happening. That guy's naked. You know, he represents a good percentage of the country right now. I mean, what are the poll numbers for Biden? I mean, he's he's like at the lowest point. Uh, it's well below 40% approval, which is for the first year is unheard of. And his approval numbers are far less than that when it comes to foreign policy and the economy. I mean, this guy has done everything wrong, everything. And it's not, I can't say it's because of his old age. I think he's being told what to do, just like in the fable of the emperor without his clothes, the emperor's new clothes, when the emperor was told by the, the people that were advising him that these were the most amazing clothes. And nobody can, you can't see them, but only the bad people will be able to know that you don't have clothes on. And so he was like, yes, I will wear them proudly. And only people who are in the, the class of the deplorables, the flyover states, the red states, are the ones who notice that he's not wearing clothes. And that's where we stand in America today. All those people in the press in the front, um, you know, they know the truth, but they're lying to us, you know? And uh, people will ask me, okay, did you use yourself for a model in this picture at all? I did. I'm the, the guy on the front row that's uh, between the little boy and Biden, kind of staring at his fuzzy leg, thinking, how in the heck did we get in this place? That's me. So this is just one of those really awkward, strange, disturbing paintings that represents a snapshot of this time in our country's history. And I hope you've enjoyed this history lesson as disturbing as it is because we need to do something about this. We need to change the trajectory. We need to take back our country and restore the values that have made this country great. This is The Emperor Has No Clothes.